Hi guys, welcome back to our series on dental materials. So today is a continuation of our previous video on the direct selling goal. So uh, in the last video, we actually discussed about the history as well as the types with a brief description on the direct filling goal. So in today's video, let's learn about the manipulation as well as the properties and finish the topic. So the basic process of manipulation will include three steps. So now what are these three steps? So the first one is degassing, which is also called as desorbing or annealing. The second step is that of compaction. And the final one is finishing of the completed restoration. So what is degassing? So the process of degassing is mainly done for non-cohesive gold, which inherently has impurities absorbed on the surface. Even cohesive gold can absorb gases from the atmosphere. Now these adsorbed gases will prevent the fusion of the gold pieces. So because of that we have to find a method to remove it so this can be done by heating the gold prior to compaction so how is this done this can be done by heating over the flame or desorption flame desorption or it can be done electrically in an electric annealer so flame desorption mainly uses two fuels so it can either be done using alcohol or it can use a gas so the alcohol flame desorption is mainly done for heating each piece and the rest is done for bulk heating of the gold. So first let's see what is electric annealing. So here the electric current is used to maintain the temperature between 340 to 370 degrees Celsius for about 5 to 20 minutes. Now the time taken is dependent upon the temperature used and the quantity of the gold that is to be heated. Are there any problems that are encountered during this electric annealing? So yes, there are. There are a lot of problems that are actually encountered in this. So the first one is if the tray moves when the gold is heated, it is going to stick together. So all the pellets are going to just stick together, giving a clump. Then if any air current comes like it is going to cause non-uniform heating. So it's going to affect the uniformity of the heating. And we cannot anneal an appropriate amount. Even, if, even though bulk heating is done, we cannot do like a full thing together. You still have to break it up into smaller pieces. There is risk of over-centering or over-fusion. And there is increased risk of contamination. And finally, there is a limited choice for the size selection of the gold pieces to be heated. The pellet sticking together and the non-uniformity is overcome in a recent electric annealer which is the neighbored electric gold foil annealer here it has an individual compartment for each piece of the gold foil now a small tip so if you want to decrease the contamination or prevent the contamination of the gold pieces it's always advisable to pick them up by wearing a camois fingertips the next one is flame desorption so here you're going to heat up the gold foil directly over a flame. So each piece is picked up by a clean, sharp pointed, non-oxidizing instrument. So preferentially made with nickel chrome, stainless steel or aeroplatinum. So the fuel used, like I discussed before, is alcohol or gas. And alcohol used is mainly pure methanol or ethanol. This is preferred, like alcohol is preferred because there is less risk of contamination. So now this technique has its own advantages. So it allows you to select the size of the gold. Then there is less contamination risk with this technique. Also, there is less danger of over centering the gold pieces. Now, what happens if the gold piece is underheated? So you don't heat it to the desired temperature. What happens then? So the impurities that are to be removed will not be completely removed. So like I said before, the cohesion or the fusion is going to be incomplete. 
So now the heat is going to deposit carbon on the surface of the restorative material causing pitting or flaking of the restoration. Next, let's talk what happens when you overheat the material. So when you overheat it, it is going to cause over centering or it can cause contamination from the tray, instrument or even the flame. So these things will eventually cause incomplete adhesion or fusion of the gold pieces. It can make the final heated portion of the metal brittle and even cause poor compaction characteristics so make the material unsuitable for restoration. Next is compaction. So here the metal is going to be forced closely into the cavity. So this process of compaction can actually done by using three instruments. So the first one is the hand mallet. The second one is a pneumatic vibratory condenser and the third one is the electrically driven condensers. So now the last process for the direct filling gold restoration is finishing. So like with the amalgam, you have to slightly overfill the cavity here. Now if the probe penetrates the restoration easily, give more compaction force to it. And the surface is burnished by using a ball burnisher to give more strain hardening. So if you want to know what strain hardening is, please go back to my video on the physical properties just so you get what it is. Then the final polishing of the restoration is done by using either a soft flex disc or we can use a commercial gold polishing kit. So this is all about the manipulation. Now let's go to the last topic, which is a property of the compacted gold. So the first property is that of the strength. So here strength is more in dense areas that is obviously where there is more material and it is less in porous areas where the layers are not compacted closely. Now hardness is basically an indication of overall quality of the compacted gold. So if in any area the hardness is less, it means that area has porosity in it. Again, the density of the direct filling gold is obviously less than that of the pure gold because you cannot completely eliminate all the voids that is present during compaction. Now, the transfer strength, hardness and density increases when you use gold foil with or without a matte gold. Now, I kept talking about voids. So what are these voids going to do to the gold restoration? So the first and foremost thing is that they are going to increase the incidence of tarnish and corrosion. But however, the degree of tarnish and corrosion resistance is good if it is compacted properly. The voids are also going to increase plaque retention. And if it is seen at the restoration tooth interface, it will cause leakage, eventually leading to secondary caries at the uh, under the restoration. What about the biocompatibility? So they are biocompatible, of course, they are, um, they cause minimum pulp response. But the problem is that we are actually pushing the material into the tooth. So there is a risk of trauma to both the tooth as well as the supporting tissue when you give the compaction force. There is risk of fracture even if it's not done properly. So finally, the advantages and disadvantages. So advantage is that good tarnish and corrosion resistance, good properties and good biocompatibility. Disadvantage is aesthetics and the high CT. So CT should match that of enamel or dendine. If it's more, there is more temperature transmission to the pulp. Again, the process of manipulation is difficult. So direct filling gold is an very important question from both the board exam point of view as well as an mcq point of view for need examination so please go through this video if you have any queries or doubts or if you think anything could be explained better please please let me know and you can leave a comment either in the comment box in the video or you can go to our instagram page and please don't forget to like the video comment share and subscribe to my channel have a great day.